Okay, hi everybody. My name is Joey. So um, a lot of people ask me about how I, I get my paint finish looking as good as it does. Um, I guess those people know that most of the time I use uh, I only use a roller to finish my pieces. Um, spray painting is great, but um, for especially for built-in things like a bookcase, um, and you might need to trim something or a plain scriber. It's pretty tricky to do any touch-ups. Well, it's pretty much impossible to do any touch-ups uh, on a, a pre or a sprayed piece. So that's why, especially for built-in things, I like to do a rolled finish. It means I can make alterations on site if uh, worse comes to worse. The other downside, I guess, to spray painting uh, is that unless you have the facilities to do it yourself, i.e. a good-sized booth, uh, that means you can carry on working while your paint's drying, um, you've got to send out to have the spraying done and that's usually pretty expensive. Uh, in my experience, the spray painting for a job costs about the same as the job from my end of it. So when a client sees a breakdown on a quote, it doubles the price essentially for a sprayed finish versus um, the few hours it takes me to roll on a couple of coats of paint. So in this video I thought what I'll do is I'll show my I'll show my process for painting um, these MDF doors, which I'm working on at the moment. Very simple um, process. And also, I thought I would finish up this piece of poplar plywood as well, because I prefer to use plywood for, for these uh, things. So I'll get, we'll show you what the finish ends up looking like on a um, piece of plywood. Okay, so firstly, uh, this is not an ad at all, but these are just what I really like to use. Um, some Monarch brand, Monarch brand um, rollers. Has a five mil nap, so the nap is the the um, well here, I guess you'd say, on the uh, roller, and so the length is five mil. That's about as short as you'll get before you go to a foam roller. Uh, I personally don't like the finish on a foam roller although it can be better on MDF, so we'll soon find that out. Um, generally, the, the short nap works best on a plywood. Uh, the good thing with this roller system is that these uh, just clip on very easily, and so to take them off, you can just push and they pop off. So what makes that especially good is that they come with this little cup to keep the, the roller in, so with wet paint, I'm ready to go. I can paint my color, finish, put it back away, and that will stay good for three months in there without um, drying out. Okay, so the first thing is to brush in a good primer into all the kind of nooks and crannies, uh, and then start rolling out all the, the flat areas. I prefer Zinza Bullseye 123 Primer. That's what the can looks like. It's not an ad, just like to use it. Uh, so then I'll once the back's primed, I'll flip it over, prime the front, and just try and get an even coverage. Once the primer's dry, I'll sand the flat panels with 180 grit on the orbital sander very quickly, so I don't go right through. And I've tried to get this on camera, but that's about as bad of sand through as I would allow, otherwise I'd um, re-paint. And from there, I'll hand sand all the little molding pieces and, and the, the internal panel as well because the orbital will dig kind of weird holes in the corners. Sand the edges. For top coats, wherever I can, I will use Resine's Lustacryl Semi Gloss Waterborne Enamel. I find it the best paint out. So, same process. Um, first, I will paint the edges and then brush in around all the little nooks and crannies and then roll on the flat areas. And really just need to get some paint on there. The stage is just getting, building up some paint. Okay, so we've sanded the primer, added the first coat of top coat, which is dry, dry enough. It was about two hours ago. Um, it's a bit patchy, it's pretty hard to see, I think, on the camera. I mean, the coverage is not bad, but the finish is not, not good yet. While it's good to have your substrate, nicely sanded. I don't go crazy with sanding because um, 
this top coat, well, this first coat of top coat feels crazy rough compared to what the sanded uh, primer did. Obviously, you need to sand the primer, um, but going crazy with sanding your substrate before you paint seems um, a little bit of like a waste of a time, in my opinion, because the texture of the paint is rough. So you're going to have to sand that anyway. So what we're trying to go for then is to build up the, the paint top coat to the point where we can sand that dead smooth and then the final coat will, will go on nicely. So yes, I will sand between coats very lightly with 220 uh, and really on the, the final coat that's where I'm going to pay attention to really finely sanding because that is what's going to show up the, you know, the defects and, and make the paint um, actually seem nice and smooth. So the first coat is sanded down with 220, uh, mainly by hand here. And you can see that I'm really just taking off the high points and anything that feels a bit rough. Uh, we can then start laying on the second coat of paint. And once the paint's actually on, it's a matter of just kind of spreading it out very lightly and just giving an even texture with the roller. So very light pressure. At this stage you want the roller to have paint on it, obviously, but not loaded with paint like you would if you were just applying the first coat. You want to spread the paint and then have a wet roller that is just going to glide over top and produce an even texture. And again, once that coat was dry, we could get back to sanding. This time is going to be the last coat, so it's 400 grit, and I'm just pretty much doing it by feel. You can see here, I'm just running my hand over all of the surface, and anything that feels like it's a little bit rough gets a little sanding down. Back to the paint, same process, get the paint on, and then roll it out with, uh, I guess what you'd say, a damp roller, but just not fully loaded. And that's finished. Three top coats, one primer coat, and that's the MDF door. Pretty bloody good finish, uh, if you ask me. This is a piece of plywood I talked about at the start. You can clearly see it's got the, the grain texture there, which a lot of clients still like. This piece I didn't sand at all. This is the, the plywood is just from the factory. Um, so it probably could have got a slightly better finish even if I sanded it. Okay, so that's the finished product. It looks pretty good to me. Um, just so you guys can have a little bit of comparison. This whole painting job, all of these end panels and doors on both sides, cost me $419 to paint. That is labor and materials. If I were to send them out to get sprayed, it would be $890. So, you know, that's a saving of half. And I don't think that the quality is half as bad as um, spray finish. I'd say it's pretty bloody close. And uh, certainly in this circumstance, it works perfectly. So maybe, hopefully you learned something. Otherwise, uh, see you next time. See ya.